This video reviews the construction of a corneal GP toric lens in your Medmont contact lens software. First begin by ensuring that you've entered the patient Rx. When you click on the patient name, then go to the clinical tab and enter the Rx here. This will ensure that when you engage the contact lens software, it will automatically import in this Rx and calculate the appropriate lens power. The next step is to ensure that we have a good quality capture to build our lens from. A single Medmont topography will give us an incredibly large surface area of capture, but it might be advisable to use the composite capture feature which fills in all of the peripheral corneal shape information and gives us virtually limbus to limbus corneal data. Here we can see a patient with a regular, with the rule astigmatism, a very normal figure eight, a very symmetric eye shape. However, you can also see that the corneal astigmatism is relatively high. We have 2.86 diopters of corneal astigmatism, indicating we have a fairly astigmatic patient. We could also look down here at the sagittal differential that looks at the peripheral corneal tericity. This eye has almost 80 microns of sagittal differential. Previous research has suggested that a toric lens may be called for at approximately 30 microns of sagittal differential. So this patient is well beyond that 30 micron threshold and one that's most likely to require a corneal GP toric lens. Now we're ready to use the contact lens module. The next step is to go up to home and select the contact lens software. That brings up the wizard where you can enter all of the manufacturers that you use or that are available to you in your region of the world. With that selected, then all of the manufacturer's designs that you've selected will show up under the design window. In this case, we're going to select a simple custom four curve design, a multi-curve that we could get from any lab in the world. Notice the Rx has been automatically imported. We'll click OK. The first step in rigid contact lens construction is to ensure that we have the right custom lens diameter. So let's measure the visible iris by going up to annotate, selecting the ruler, click your cursor on the visible iris border, drag the cursor through the center to the opposing side, click the cursor again, and that will tell you your visible iris diameter. In this case, approximately 11.86 millimeters. We could right click on top of that ruler we've just created and delete it. And then we select the lens diameter with a normal to slightly large visible iris diameter. We might select for this patient a 9.8 diameter lens and apply. Then we could pick up the contact lens and place it where we think it looks centered on the visible iris the way we would like to see it through the slit lamp. Then we click our cursor in the center and determine the apical clearance. We have a lens with 34 microns of apical clearance. There's fluid layer thickness of 34 and the target is approximately 20, maybe up to 25. Let's flatten the lens to reduce the central clearance. We'll try one click and apply. And that takes us down to 28 microns. Remember our target is approximately 20. Let's flatten the base curve again. And that takes us to 18, so a little bit too flat. We'll steepen it up slightly, see if we can get to around 20. Now we're at 23. That's certainly within our range of 20 to 25. So our lens clears the corneal apex with that 20 plus microns of fluid, and that allows it to land in the mid periphery. Let's determine by moving this axis line around what axis the lens finds 
its landing with the peripheral corneal surface. And of course, on a with the rule cornea, that will be across the horizontal meridian. And we see that here, landing at nine o'clock, landing at three o'clock. So we have a good construction, an appropriate lens to cornea relationship across the flat meridian where the lens clears the corneal apex, lands in the mid periphery that should keep it laterally stable. So the next question is how does the opposing meridian look? Let's take the axis line to the steep. And here you see a fluid layer that's getting ever thicker and thicker and thicker. In previous sessions, we've explained that around 40 microns of fluid at the edge of the optic zone right here would be about the maximum that we would want to accept. Any more than 40 and the lens is going to rock back and forth a significant amount. It may be unstable, it may struggle to be centered and comfortable. Therefore, with this very toric cornea, we're going to need a steep meridian radius that's different from the flat meridian radius. Let's select toric. And now two base curves have been defaulted to, a flat and a steep. Notice that they match the K readings. So the MedMod software is automatically going to default to the radiuses of the flat and steep K. Now we'll apply and drop that toric lens on eye. And then let's look at whether we have that good horizontal alignment across the flat meridian. Notice with the toric, our lens now has too much apical clearance and it lacks the landing at three and nine o'clock. Well, let's first start with apical clearance. Let's flatten the base curves so we can get the lens close to that 20 micron target. Now we're at 22, that's appropriate. However, across the flat meridian, our lens lacks the alignment with the peripheral cornea. We need to steepen the base curve so this lens will come down and touch on the flat meridian. So let's steepen the base curve at least one step. In the steep meridian, you'll notice our lens is landing down and we desire to have a small channel running through the vertical meridian to promote good tear pump, good tear exchange, a healthy rigid contact lens fit. So our lens across the steep axis is too tight. Let's flatten the steep meridian. So we're going to steepen the flat and flatten the steep meridian. And let's see if that change will give us the landing at three and nine o'clock and the channel across the vertical meridian. When we apply, now the lens is coming close to being in touch with the peripheral corneal surface. And let's see if we have that channel in the vertical meridian. So things are looking pretty good here. We have our alignment across the horizontal that will keep the lens laterally stable. Having that appropriate apical clearance under the lens allows for the lens to land in the mid periphery and create a stable contact lens fit. Then by using a radius along the steep axis that will best match the surface, allowing for a tiny fluid layer where the lens can freely move across that vertical meridian with each blink. That should promote a healthy tear exchange and an ideal contact lens fit. And then finally, we have all of the parameters we need for the custom lens on this side. So we can export this map to the lab and they can record this information to design the lens, or we can just provide this information in an email or phone call to our lab.